Hello, everybody, and welcome to this special episode we have on a fun Axis and Allies World War I variant. So this is the 1916 setup. So yes, uh, you'll notice it's just the uh, out-of-box Europe board. There's no need to have a 1916 setup for the global map because most of the uh, action had already been finished by 1916. So I figured just keep it as the Europe map. No need to have a global variant. No need to have a variant of a variant. So yeah, 1916. Um, so why 1916? Well, I think it was a pretty good year. It's uh, the year of battles. So the front lines are established. And big battles are going on. Um, all the starting moves and actions have all, have all, you know, everything settled into a, to straight lines and stuff. So it's, now's the time when lines, those lines are gonna break, for so it's gonna be some dramatic change. Uh, it's kind of like the uh, height of uh, central powers control, and the uh, right before Russian American Russian collapse and American entry in the war. So. Yeah, I also chose to do this because I was inspired by another YouTuber, uh, Hunter Jones, who he did a 1916 setup, and I'll be linking his video in the description. Um, and it was pretty good. I liked it. I saw it. Um, There's a couple things I didn't like, so I figured, hey, I can do better. You know, I, I could make my own version. Um, no offense to Hunter Jones or anything. I think his setup's good. But yeah, it's just mine's different. Uh couple things he changed the order of play because he has a very specific starting date it was the first day of the battle of the Somme so he had the British going first and I don't remember the rest of the order of play but it was definitely different from the uh, regular order of play and I didn't like that my has this the same order of play as the out-of-box original I figured it's less confusing for newcomers so It'd be easier to handle and understand if we just keep the same order of play. Uh, he also has some historical inaccuracies. Uh, I think he had Gallipoli still going on, and that was definitely over by the time the Somme started. Um, he also had British units in the Lorraine, which never happened during the war, but hey, that's fine. Um, and I decided I could throw in some, being such a history historical nerd, uh, I figured I could throw in some things of my, of my own that were uh, very uh, niche parts of the war that I included in the map, but I'll go over those later. A um, couple things I should mention, all the, you'll notice that all the minor powers in this setup, all the minor powers have already been activated, so you'll notice that I didn't bother putting control markers on Let's see, here in Africa, I didn't bother putting control markers in the uh, Portuguese and Belgian territories because obviously Portugal and Belgium are, have already been activated, so they're going to be French, obviously. Um, yeah, that's kind of like a rule I have when I play. I mean, if, if the blue territory, it's, it's a French territory. I mean, the British can come and liberate it, but they can't actually capture it, you know. Um, same thing with like Romania and Bulgaria. I didn't bother to put Russian or Ottoman emblems over them because I figured it was obvious. Yeah, and uh, last thing. Um, oh, I don't have the uh, income set up here. The, you'll, you'll see them in the description in the link when I have the document with the setups. It'll have the, IPC, the starting IPCs. Yeah, I have my own chart. I don't like to use that, so I didn't set that up. And also, you notice all these uh, black, they're uh, flipped control markers. I like to use those as uh, contested markers. So yeah, those are just contested territory. So it just like covers up the emblem, so it shows that no one controls it yet. So that's just something I like to do, um, so not to confuse you guys. So anyway, let's get into the setup. Um, the only rule changes to the setup are the polit are political things, which is really obvious. Um, basically, it's a few turns ahead, 1916, so the United States is going to join on round two instead of round four, because it's two rounds of head. Um, same with the Russian Revolution conditions start on round two. Um, 
Obviously, Austria is not required to attack Serbia on their first turn. So yeah, that's out of the way. Um, everything else is still the same. Except for tanks, I decided to make tanks available to purchase starting in round one because they did make their appearance in 1916. But plus, if you're buying them in this round, 1916, they won't be available until the next round, 1917. So, you know, it just makes more sense if you can buy them now. You won't, you won't be able to use them until next turn anyway, so. Anyway, let's... uh start uh, I'm guess I'm gonna be copying Hunter Jones because he had a like a description like a kind of a narrative story I guess like kind of like a in the Larry Harris when in the rule books he has like the descriptions on the front page for the whatever access nice edition it is so I guess this is my uh, description so welcome to the summer of 1916 the great war has been raging for two years and little ground has changed since the early months of the war. But it will not remain that way for long. This is the year of battles, where great offensives are being launched on almost every front. Over here on the western front, if we look over here, the, the endless meat grinder known as the Battle of Verdun the longest and most brutal battle of the entire war has been underway for months. There, Germany is attempting to bleed France white, but France shall not let them pass and is slowly preparing its own counteroffensive. To the north, hoping to ease some pressure off Verdun, the British have launched their own massive offensive in the Somme with little success. On the eastern front, Russia is launching an offensive in Galicia hoping to knock Austria-Hungary out of the war, but bigger problems are rising at home with revolution on the horizon. In the Alps, Austria and Italy fight for control of mountain peaks and seem to be evenly matched, but after endless battles on the Isonzo River, one side may finally break. Austria-Hungary has been weakened by two years of fighting and is being propped up with German assistance. Such as in the Macedonian front, where Serbia has finally been conquered. Right there. See, Austria has Serbia. Uh, but the Allies have landed in Greece, and the Five Nation Army created the Five Nation Army, and they're hoping to take Serbia back. But the Central Power's newest member, Bulgaria, is now helping to hold the line. So yeah, uh, I should mention that the complicated political situation of Greece, since it was kind of divided in a, kind of a mini-civil war, I decided to uh, just make it start and contested between this little Bulgarian regiment and the Five Nation Army. So that way I don't have to worry about who actually controls the country. So that makes it easier. Yeah, that was kind of a interesting decision I made. But anyways, um, the Allies have been joined by Portugal, activated, and Romania. The latter, Romania, attempting to take ethnic Romanian lands from Austria-Hungary. But soon all four of the Central Powers are going to converge and put everything on hold and join up to perform a lightning campaign to take out Romania. So yeah, pretty weak. See, over in the Ottoman Empire, the Allies have underestimated the sick man of Europe and failed to take Constantinople at the Gallipoli landings. And the British have been making slow progress in Mesopotamia, but the Ottomans have also made their own failures at the Caucasus and the invasions of the Suez Canal. Yeah, um, the Russians have taken parts of Armenia, and the British are opposed to attack the Transjordan. In Persia, the Ottomans, the Russians, and the British are all fighting for influence. 
and in Arabia, the British have initiated the Arab Revolt. But the Central Powers have also been funding their own own rebellions against the Allied colonies. Over in Libya, you got the Senussi, uh, in the Sudan, and in uh, Somaliland, the Dervish state. And also, up in Ireland, with the uh, Easter Rising. Germans support Easter Rising. And in Africa, the Allies have snatched, snatched up all but one of the German colonies. German East Africa. But the forces there have proved to be elusive and challenging to beat. So you got the British and the Belgian forces surrounding them. Um, at sea, after a long arms race, the British and German fleets are ready to engage in the Battle of Jutland. So you got quite a lot of capital ships there ready to go at it. And on every sea, U-boats continue to sink tons of Allied and neutral shipping, which are bringing some neutral nations like the United States closer and closer to entering the war. In the air, fighter planes duel on all fronts. New technologies like tanks will be making their first appearance in warfare. All the minor powers have joined the war, and millions are being killed. The Central powers are in a strong military position, but the Allies' combined ec economies have them outmatched. Russia is soon to fall, and America is preparing for war. The front has been stable for a long time, but now is the time for dramatic change. This is 1916. So yeah, hope you like that uh, spiel, the 1916 setup. Um, so let me know what you think. I'll be linking the uh, document with the uh, details on the setups and the starting IPCs in the description. So yeah, let me know what you think. Um, please like and subscribe if you like the video. And uh, please look forward to my next videos. So see you next time. Take care. Bye.